Hi there, and happy to be here with you today on a bright sunny day to talk about precipitation. We're going to talk about the process of precipitation or how precipitation works. But before I get started on that, I want to show you how these lecture videos are going to be organized. Right now, this is lecture video two. I've given you a little bit of an introduction to precipitation. In this um, video, I'm going to talk about the conditions needed for precipitation to happen and go through that process of precipitation. In the next lecture video, I'm going to talk about air saturation, relative humidity, and dew point. And in the fourth video, I'm going to talk about air cooling mechanisms. Okay, so let us get started. So three conditions have to happen in order for precipitation to occur. That is, you need some air saturation. You need a lot of water vapor in the air. You need to be have the air completely filled with water vapor. And that air needs to cool. It needs to cool and condense. And it will condense on what they call nuclei or dust particles or ocean salt or drops of water that are already in the air. These will, um, these little nuclei will just build up and build up until they cannot be held anymore against the force of gravity, right? They're going to stick together by cohesion and they're going to um, eventually succumb to gravity. And that's when we get rain hitting the ground. So let's just go through this. So there has to be sufficient moisture. And where is that moisture coming from? It has to be sufficient water vapor. Um, it comes from evaporation that puts the gaseous water into the air. And that's coming from the ocean and the Earth's surface. That's how you're going to get more moisture. That's the first step is adding moisture to the air. Next, that air, that warm air is going to rise. And that's something we're, I'm going to talk about in the last lecture as how that um, cooling mechanism, how that air rises and what happens to that air. Well, it, it cools. And then um, that water vapor is going to condense. That means it's going to go from a gas to a liquid. And when it does that, it'll do that on the surfaces of anything else that's in the air. These dust particles, um, any, like I said, ocean salts or other water just building up. And that's when you'll get clouds. And those clouds will keep filling with those condensed water molecules. And then condensation continues to happen. They get bigger and bigger. And as the droplets get bigger, gravity eventually pulls them to the ground. And that's how rain happens. So let's just review again. So the atmosphere is going to come saturated with water vapor. Small particles provide surfaces for that condensation to happen. Um, you've got the cohesion of the water molecules and they're adhering to those dust particles, but then they will keep condensing and condensing. That water vapor turns into liquid and then builds up in clouds. And then as it gets bigger, it falls due to gravity. So that is how it works. And what I'm going to do next is talk about um, those first two conditions, the atmosphere becoming saturated and the um, air cooling to have condensation happen. Um, the last part we're going to leave to what happens every every time it rains. But um, the first two are what I'm going to focus on, how that air cools and how it becomes saturated and how we describe that. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. And I will move